Let's talk about weapons of mass destruction. In 2002, a subcommission of the United Nations uh, concluded that depleted uranium was a weapon of mass destruction. The United States has, has dropped thousands of tons of what is, in effect, a byproduct of the uh, uranium enrichment process uh, you know, in Iraq, in Afghanistan. Even Clinton, Gore dropped it in Yugoslavia, right? Uh, that's the kind of way the United States engages in war. You, took, you take a look at uh, war casualties. Norman Solomon wrote a book recently that, that got made into a film. And in this, it's incredible. World War I, the percentage of casualties that were civilian, 10%. World War II was like 30%. Vietnam, 70%. The war in Iraq, 90%. Do you understand what this means? This means that of all the people that die in the war, 90% are civilians. That means for every soldier killed, you killed nine civilians to get to that soldier. To my mind, engaging in warfare like that is a war crime. That is a war crime. That is a war crime. We, we say to people, uh, if the other candidates want to win our, our voters over to them, go ahead, here are the issues, talk the issues, win them over, it's a democracy, and that's fine. But do me a favor, don't tell people that want to vote for us that they can't do it. Respect the right of people to make a different choice. And I like to use uh, one historical example about Eugene Debs. I imagine what it was in 1912 uh, to walk into a room with a hundred people and say uh, women should have the right to vote. And I wonder how many people in that day said to him, you know, voting for Debs is throwing your vote away. He, he only could get five, six percent of the vote, the, the highest percentage he ever got when he ran. Imagine, I wonder what the women here, what the men here think of that. I wonder when the major candidate said, well, you know, it's not time. We can't give women the right to it's not time yet, uh, you know. Um, what, what do you think of that? If you had lived in that time, would you have voted for Debs? Would you have thrown your vote away when, in doing so? What about if you had lived in the 1840s when James Burney was running with the Liberty Party? And he, he figured out, you know, and the abolitionists were willing to stand up and say we need to end slavery. He couldn't get one percentage of the national vote, and he ran twice. Got less percentage of the vote than Nader got, you know, ever. Think about that. Would you have thrown your vote away, or would you have said, you know what, slavery is wrong, and I'm going to be part of a group of people that is trying to create a greater consciousness and move this society forward. And we're only going to move forward when we refuse to buy into this fundamental lie. Basically, this claim, this innocent bystander theory that everybody else is responsible for the fact that you will not use your power the way you ought to. I wrote some things on YouTube or writing opinion editorials. I wrote a long piece um, called The Obama Craze, Count Me Out, that was published in Beyond Cron online and it got picked up by Counterpunch and some other sites. I wrote a piece for the Chronicle called What's Good for the Goose is Good for the Gander, basically saying the Dems complain about Nader, but they don't tell you all the times they won because of the spoiler problem and one that they have no intention of fixing. Um, you know, we're out there. Ralph is out there. We do interviews, and we've, uh, you know, we, we try, to, try to put it out there. When I ran for mayor, I would often walk into a room, and, you know, the hardest part is getting somebody in the room to listen. If they listen, you know, we can hold our own against anybody, mm -hmm. you know, but can you get them in the room? And that's, that's the challenge. And, you know, I would walk in the room sometimes and there'd be five people there. And uh, that's okay. You got the, and that's five people that you hope talk to other people. And you hope, this is what you hope for. You hope that when somebody is uh, disparaging Nader, that there are then somebody to stick to speak up, you know. Because uh, history is going to be very good to Ralph Nader. It's going to be very good to him. Um, and if you've seen the uh, 
an unreasonable man, the DVD, the documentary about him, already you can see what that uh, legacy is going to be. He really is a, 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 a tremendous figure, and um, you know, I've got a lot better things to do than be a vice presidential running mate with someone and to go out there into an arena with very little money and very little media opportunity. But I think it's important to try to do it, and I'm trying to contribute what I can uh, in some of the issues I care about. And so I think it's incumbent on everybody to take these links, find these links, and send them around to people and say, what about this? And, you know, I, I love it. I love to hear some of the, the responses back. You know, people just, um, the, the people are scared, but they don't realize. I mean, in 2004, the Democrats had a pro-war candidate, wanted to increase, uh, you know, money for the war, increase the number of troops in Fallujah, and the anti-war movement was asked to just, you know, sit down. And that didn't work very well.